and then look what happens to him. And that's and melee. Right there. Yeah. That's the difference. And I feel like in your games that we're watching, I wish there was more of this stuff. Hey everyone, it's Sammy and I'm back with a new video series. So I want to do a series that takes the actual lessons I give to my students, not staged or anything, and just takes the best parts of them, the highlights that you guys would be interested in, and put them into a quick little video so that it would be easier to digest. For this particular lesson, it was a lesson I had with a student, Kellen, who is also the editor for the video, funnily enough. And we went over the idea that one of the biggest things that people misunderstand is that high level matches and low level matches actually have a lot of the same situations. It's gonna run up. Oh, you didn't punish mm -hmm. it, and now you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to watch a game of me playing that specifically has relatively good execution on these factors. Okay. And I'm actually gonna show you two games I have in mind. And again, th this isn't to be like, oh, look, like I'm good at this. I just want you to get a feel for what it would look like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a classic one, dude. And th this one, he kind of gets run over very quickly. But I just want to show you like, man, like I think this could be you versus the Sheik you're currently playing against. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's already, that's a stock gone. I feel like Wait, it, it's not stream. Oh, okay. Well, that's how quick it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you okay. see? Yeah, I can see. Oh, I've watched this before. <laughs> yeah. So, so just look at the opening. So he missed positions, right? Again, look at where he is. Look at my threat range. Mm -hmm. I notice it. I'm like, I can hit you. I wave dash in place in case I don't know which way he's going to go. And then I have a good gimp. So if you know your flow chart for gimping chic, you know, Oh, look, he's already dead. He's been playing for three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you were in that same position, just because you haven't thought about it, you'd miss the shine and be like, okay, and then you just double jump back on stage, you know? Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Right yeah. Now. But I want you to really push yourself is what I'm showing you, that like you, you are actually getting a lot of the same quality of situations. But because you haven't thought of a solution or pushed yourself to figure one out, a lot of the times you just kind of give it up. Mm -hmm. much. Oh, it does look similar. Yeah, see, it looks pretty similar. And I even messed up. But hey, I just checked the range and I was like, you can't hit me at this range. Watch what I do. I just stood <laughs> still there. Because I knew he couldn't hit me. But I feel like the sheep you're fighting might do the same thing here. Yeah, with like four or, or, or something, something very else. similar. Okay, not bad. And I feel like you got a similar position the first stock, right? Where you like had an edge guard and then you didn't quite hit it right, but then see how I kind of adapted it? Like I thought yeah. he was gonna hit the platform and then he didn't, but when I fixed it, like I, I came up with something that would work for it, right? Mm -hmm. But you got the same quality of situation. And then remember the side B situation where I was like, oh, you could try to run off shine? Yeah. It's very similar, right? Oh, Sheik is near the ledge and lag. Like, it's very common that Fox can shine the startup of her up B. Mm -hmm. So these are just like situations that come up both in your matches and in my matches. This also looks familiar. I feel like I'm right out of his range. And what does yep. he do? He just tries to hit me and he's probably still holding forward to try to F tilt or something, you know? Yeah. But again, because I'm confident in my spacing, I'm just okay, like, okay, I'll throw out a move here. Right, and it doesn't matter that he's coming from the platform. He just ends up in the same spot anyway. Exactly, yeah. And I, I account for the wavelength, though, right? Yeah. The full, the, I'm like, this is the furthest you can hit. But because you're like, you might be here, you might be here, you might be here, I feel like you can't have that same confidence in your exact spacing. Right. But if you put yourself exactly where you want to be, then things like this become a lot easier to punish, I feel like. Right, so like, so there shouldn't, or um, I don't always have to adjust my spacing. Yeah, least. sometimes you're already at the right spacing. Okay. And sometimes you're not, and you need to adjust it to be there like as soon as possible. Right. 
And see, I get hit a ton. Not everything's going well. But do you see how, like, the level of conversions has, like, granted me a lot better uh, results this game? Yeah. What you're trying to do is pretty similar. But look at the punish, you know? Right. I feel like you hit a punish that was pretty similar. And see, I, I dropped my punishes too. Oh, but my defense. You know, like mm -hmm. something like this. I feel like you die here every time, right? Yeah. But like sometimes you, you hit a tech and it changes everything. I shouldn't have bared after the next tech. I just thought it was cool, I think. <laughs> but. And see, he down smashes me. Like there are plenty of ways I get hit. And I want to emphasize it's not like I want you to be perfect at all. Mm -hmm. It's not reasonable. But hitting this edge guard is reasonable. Oh, and I miss it. <laughs> And now you're off stage. And now I could die. Yeah, exactly. And see, even the Sheik, who has done a very bad job versus me, could have been up and could have gotten two stocks there, right? Yeah. And it's funny, there's actually a set I played with Swedish, where honestly, it looked pretty similar to this. Obviously, the Swedish played infinitely better than this guy, but the results were the same. And then he just hits like two edge guards, and then I almost lose. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, like, it, it, it's true across all skill levels is what I'm telling you, I guess. Right. And I can literally show you the set versus Swedish where I'm destroying him just as hard as this guy, and it ends up being close because Swedish hits this edge guard instead of missing it. Let's watch this. This set is cool to me because specifically, I feel like my execution on a lot of stuff was very impactful in the set. Mm -hmm. um, let's watch... Uh... Such a battlefield game, something a little different. Do you remember the up tilt you CC'd and then down tilted? Yeah. Hmm. The situation looks really different now, right? Yeah. So you're getting a lot of the same situations. Yeah, that was a good recovery, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to point out recoveries, too, since we've been talking about it. Ooh. Yeah. So this game is not going so well. Good recovery again, right? Right. Remember how to beat run-up grab? Yeah. So this was cool because it was more of a mix-up situation. So this is the classic. So he did bear into dash away in case I shield grabbed. And then he was going to come back in and grab me. But a right. lot of sheiks have the habit of, uh, what's it called? They'll still try to grab you, even if you didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I, I just kind of read him doing that. But oh, that was cool. Well, look at the punish. Oh. Right? Like, yeah. If And this is what I was telling you about. This game in particular, I think, had a lot more sauce for the like execution and punishes and stuff than like the mm -hmm. last one. But like, do you see how much this matters? I feel like I got kind of destroyed this stock honestly like he read me really hard a ton of times but what's the difference okay he didn't kill me on his edge guards i didn't mess up my ledge dashes and then look what he did wrong he went for this kind of greedy ledge hop there and i mm -hmm. like knew he was going to do something like that and then look what happens to him and that's and melee right there. yeah that's the difference that like he honestly read me in neutral way more times than i read him but I hit my recoveries, I didn't mess up my execution, and I wasn't lazy. He kind of did the opposite. He, like, overextended for a hit he didn't have to, he was a little lazy from the ledge, and then he just died. And, like, mm -hmm. this is the contrast. And I feel like in your games that we're watching, I wish there was more of this stuff. Like, this skill set is what I'm saying. Not, like, this specific sequence, obviously. Right. I tech rolled here. And if we were watching your VOD, you wouldn't have tech roll, do you know? Yeah. And and it's not silly, because obviously you can tech any direction, but when we see you for three stocks in a row, only tech in place, and then it's funny to see even Kirby Kaze, it's like, well, he misses tech chase. But at least I gave him the chance to miss the tech chase, you know what I mean? Right. Versus the guy you're playing against, he never really had that chance, because you just did the same option, pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And I really want to emphasize that no matter how well you play, like if you lose the stock here, you're you're probably gonna lose. And that's kind of how it feels when we watched you versus uh, the guy you were playing against. Mm -hmm. Here, I wish I punished the dash jack, but still decent. And then you see him whip down smash like, oh. And I damn. actually punished it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like when you were playing, you know, you once I got missed a very similar punish, right, where you could have up smashed yeah. him. I shot like kind of a shitty laser, right? And like this yeah. reminds me of you. It's like you didn't change your spacing well. You kind of did an autopilot thing, and then you tried to keep dash dancing, and you just got grabbed. And you're like, dang, yeah. he really just did that. But it's like, isn't it on you to like, like if I was more specific here, I would have seen, hey, he doesn't have a jump, and he's above me. I think I just thought he would land on the platform or something. Mm -hmm. But why even give him the opportunity to do this? I could just stand right here, and he can't fall down, right? Right. So I just want to show you that, again, even up to a very high level, people make mistakes like that. And, like, they're equally costly, you know? Good recovery again. Probably meant to shorten and messed up. Yeah, the downer. So every Sheik wants downer up smash there, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see my DI, by the way? So DI away. I di I rolled in knowing that if he f tilted me, I di away again. I tech in because if he hits me, I'll go towards the center of the stage instead of off stage. So he did a crazy di mix up here. So he actually crossed me up with this up air, right? Mm -hmm. So look at this. But I was holding right here so that if he hit me on the left side, I would go as far away as possible. Right. Then here I'm like, okay, he wants down air up smash or something to that effect. So I'm gonna di away. So like, do you see how big of a difference this makes? Yeah. Like, I had so many spots I could have died here. But I tried to make his life, like, as difficult as possible. And it's like a credit to his punish game that, like, he kept up with it, hit the DI mix-ups, you know, he, he was really trying there. But mm -hmm. I feel like versus your opponent, like, they would fall apart versus this type of defense. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like the video, you know, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, etc. I'm going to be continuing with both this series and the habit series, so stay tuned for more uploads.